And this is your life. One mistake. And it can be taken away. Hey there. Welcome back to Pod and Deliver. Tonight we have a great guest. Our brother, Chris Agler. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Doing good, doing good. Excellent. Now, of course, we have Ruben. Hey, you know what? We're going to look at a film today, you guys, called Life of a King 2013, starring Cuba Good- Gooding Jr. as Eugene Brown, Dennis Heisbert as Searchy, Malcolm Mays as Taim, and Lisa Gray Hamilton as Sheila King. Uh, you know, Ruben and, and Chris, I really liked it. I'm going to say it right off the bat. I really liked this film. And I'm going to tell you why. I went into it not thinking I'm going to like it. I sat down with my wife, and then eventually my son came in and watched it with me. And, you know, this is, I thought Cuba Gooding Jr. did a great job, you know, diff, very different than, you know, show me the money, you know, he, very different than that type of character. And, and this film takes you, it has really two parts to it. One is you, you're dealing with a man who, who's in prison for like 18 years for committing a, a robbery. And then you see him come out and try to get his life started again, try to meet with his kids and try to get a job and try to just live a life, you know, a positive life. You can see that he's, he's really trying. But the second part of the film is where he's working with these young kids. At uh, He first meets him as a janitor at a school, and um, he's helping out a principal while he, during detention, and he, he starts introducing chess to them. And, of course, at first, none of these kids, this is inner city school. I believe this is, like, outside of Washington, D.C., and he's teaching them chess, and then they're learning. And at first, of course, they, they're not too excited about it. One of the characters, one of the young men um, – is uh Tahim, uh played by Malcolm Mays. This young man, I, I thought he was a great actor. And of course, at first he's not excited about it, but as you see, as time goes on, he is. And uh one of the couple of things I did have a problem with it as they as the film was going, I didn't understand where um uh, Eugene Brown got money because eventually he started a, a, a program outside the school because he was no longer able to work at the school. And so he he bought a house. And I'm like, where did he get this money? They never talk about where he may get, gets his, his 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 income. And then also, there's I felt like why did no no it was never explained why he was such a good man. Although you do uh, get reference to Dennis Hasbert Hasbert at the end of the film where uh, he's talking about hey I uh, chess is my life and also the Bible. So I'm thinking it, it must be something spiritual that may, drove him to be this man to help children. After school, working with them on chess, taking, making, helping them become these chess masters, right? These great chess players. And um, I don't know, I was inspired. I really enjoyed it. Uh, how about you guys? Chris, how about you first? Uh, did you enjoy the film? Tell, tell me about it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Now, right, away, right off the bat, I would say I wasn't looking forward to it because I looked at the, the Wikipedia page and I thought, okay, is it make any money? And I hadn't heard about it. I hadn't heard of, of it. So I wasn't necessarily looking forward to it. But right off the bat in the first maybe scene or and first two or three scenes were great. And I felt like they did discuss why he was a good man. He had spent 18 years in prison and he was mentored in prison by a guy that was reminding him daily that his life, his end life was his end game as in chess. The end game was important. And after, you know, he 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 basically became a believer in his end life, that life did matter. So I felt like that was explained. How he bought that house, yeah, you're right. They didn't explain that. But the end life, I, I love the whole idea of reminding our young ones around us uh, as we get a little older, uh, that end game. That end game is so important. Not necessarily retirement, but what are you going to be doing tomorrow? What are you going to be doing in the next few few uh, months and next few years and the movie did a great job in showing if you are going to be used as a pawn someone will use you don't you agree uh, Ruben I, I love that whole uh, analogy and uh, that whole oh he did that the whole movie, movie right or just, yeah the analogy of back to the chessboard yeah I, I feel like your descriptions um, bo- both your descriptions are fine for the first half of the movie which I really liked and I, I feel like he he was teaching them that wasn't the second half. That was the first half. It was him teaching um, the boys, the, not the uh, a lot of boys, um, in the detention first, the, the detention hall, and then later on his own chess. That's the strength of the movie. Well, I would say two things. You mentioned Jake, the performance of Cuba Gooding, excellent, and him around the chessboard and explaining the pieces and what they mean is the movie at its finest, and. The, the one-two punch is his experience 
finding a job as a as a felon. And so this you could is very palpable, and it's it was a real strong opening. And he might have fibbed about about it, which landed him the job. And then the second half, I just tuned out. It just became we used to call them movies of the week, you know, Wednesday night specials or something, after school specials. I didn't care about these other secondary. I didn't even care about his daughter. It it was very, she became a central focus and she was telling him and teaching him. And I'm like, where did this movie go? Um, I can't recommend it overall just because the second half was dull to me. Um, Weren't you interested though, Ruben, that that this is a true story. I mean, these are, these are his kids. So what? So what? some humanity he has a life he has a life outside the chest and it's they didn't explore that the set they brought us something very strong in the beginning and they let the movie go with these cliches that we've seen a thousand times you know what i thought in the second half because it because they set it up so well i thought man i wish i was watching searching for bobby fisher a much superior chess film well another thing they didn't explain is why his daughter and his son all of a sudden made a turnaround. Yeah. There was there was this expectation when you're watching something like how how did this stuff happen? And they they brought these characters in and then they they didn't explain why. And Chris, it's so hard to watch. I mean, maybe this is the bias, but you weren't affected by this, Jake. But I was uh, the bias of all the movies that we've seen. How many times have we seen one of these characters get shot and killed? I I can't do it. I tuned out. Freedom Riders. Uh, what's the one? Uh, critical thi- critical thinking. Critical. Uh, might you know, have been a shooting. another chess movie. Shooting. Uh, one of the characters that they're all rallying around the memory of him. I am so sick of it. I will say this to 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 speak to Chris's point regarding they didn't show. I mean, obviously, you only have a two hour movie, but also I felt like them the children seeing him work with young people now he didn't do that with his children i thought that was a good enough but maybe you didn't think obviously you didn't think that was uh, enough to to understand why these kids came around to like their dad because their dad was in prison for 17 years not having a relationship with their with his kids and now they're adults so yeah i mean there's some of that but i think so overall I, at the end i felt inspired i mean this is a guy who went through a lot who, and it's, a, you know, this is not, you know, now he lives in North Carolina and he's doing chess, has chess uh, programs there with his wife. And he's, you guys know how old he is in real life right now? Nope. 58 years old. I thought mm-hmm. he, you know, this was filmed in 2013. So I was thinking, you know, he's ready in his 70s, right? This happened years ago, but no, this is, a, the, he's he's not too far north of us regarding age. But um, that being said, I don't know, I, I have to give my uh, uh, approval on it. But I, Ruben, you say no. Chris, you're like, are you 50-50, it sounds like? or I would say I was 50-50 because my wife uh, didn't want to see it with me. So I turned it on in our bedroom last night to watch it for the first time. And I enjoyed it, and she fell asleep. So I'd say, yeah. It was. Uh, it didn't. It didn't capture her at all. Uh, and she. She wanted. She decided to, to to watch it with me. She said, "Oh, I'll give it a chance." The beginning, as Ruben said, was so strong. She said, "Oh, maybe I'll give it a chance." And about you know, thirty minutes later, she was gone. She was you know Friday night snoozer. Sorry, Cuba. All right. With that, I want to thank you for being here with us on Pod and Deliver. Thank you, Chris, for joining us again, and Ruben. And you know what? We will see you soon. Have a good night. Bye bye.